DNA can be assembled based on the restriction and ligation methods. Over here, the traditional cloning in multiple cloning sites works well for a single coding sequence, but an iterative process is needed for multiple fragments. It is very laborious and it is unlikely that multiple fragments can be inserted. Moreover, there is not a high throughput approach and various scars of all restriction sites can be created, which is not a preferable thing because scars can be heavy and big. In comes the BioBrick approach. BioBrick parts are DNA sequences that are standardized according to a specific standard, which may be a BioBrick standard, and it facilitates the optimization and reuse of a particular sequence. So they can be assembled in a hierarchical process. They have a three level hierarchy of a system, device, and part. A system is a collection of devices that performs a high level task. A device is a collection of parts with defined function. And a part may be a promoter, ribosome, binding site, a coding sequence, or even a terminator. The biobrick part is carried on a plasmid and it is flanked by two restriction sites at each side. The two nearest restriction sites have a compatible overhang after digestion. And after the restriction and ligation steps, the new biobrick part is flanked with the same restriction sites. So it is id important and a six base pair scar is created in the middle. In the newly created biobrick, the four restriction sites are only present once. So for the assembly at the other side, some other enzyme can be used. Due to id potency, the same protocol with the same restriction enzymes can be created and the biobrick can be inserted and uh, in a very standard way. However, we have no control over the existence and sequence of the intervening scars. This is problematic when we are trying to locate the coding sequence because only two blocks can be fused at a time. There is a binary DNA assembly and the multiple DNA assembly in comparison requires an iterative process. So we can create a combinatorial library over here, but it is difficult, especially when more than two biobricks are combined. Golden Gate shuffling relies on two unique properties of the type 2S restriction enzyme. First, the non-palindromic recognition site and the cleavage site is different. So by an appropriate positioning of the recognition site, it can be removed from the building block upon cleavage. This allows the simultaneous restriction and ligation because there is no risk that the ligated product will be redigested. The second property that is made use of is that the type 2S restriction enzyme generates a four nucleotide overhang, which can be freely chosen. So these are chosen as such that they function as a position marker, which defines the order of the assembly. So with a negative selection marker in between the restriction site of the destination vector, only the clone with the different building blocks assembled in the right predefined order will be selected. We can imagine that for multiple building blocks, this resembles the tail PCR as well. The flanking four nucleotides are user specifiable and can be carefully chosen to order the different fragments. Moreover, only a cell with a plasmid carrying all the fragments in the right order will be able to grow. We can also attempt to assemble our DNA based on homology. So the first step over here, uh, there are one, two, three, four. There are five techniques that we can discuss. One is sequence ligation, independent cloning, slick, the Gibson assembly, the circular polymerase extension cloning, the CPEC, the infusion cloning and DNA shuffling. So beginning with SLIC, here the fragment of interest is amplified with primers that have five prime termini with a 25 base pair homology to the ends of the vector or the fragment of our interest. The incubation of DNA polymerase without the DNTPs happen and it causes a tube back reaction by the three prime to five prime exonuclease activity. 
this tube back activity is stopped uh, and then the vector and fragment have sufficient complementary single stranded 5 prime overhangs and they will anneal. The gaps or nicks will be closed upon transformation of the E. coli. So here the scarless assembly is possible if there is sufficient homology between the multiple fragments that have to be assembled. Otherwise the scars have to be added and they are very large, 25 base pairs long. It is sequence independent and it can be used for every fragment and destination vector restriction site that do not have to be avoided. Moreover, long single stranded DNA shows risk to form secondary structures. Gibson assembly is very much similar to slick, but it uses a dedicated exonucleus which is heat liable. And in contrast to slick, it has 5 prime to 3 prime exonucleus activity. Once the overhangs are sufficiently long, they will anneal. Fusion polymerase, which is a heat stable proofreading activity, is added simultaneously with the 5' prime to 3' prime endonuclease, uh, sorry, exonuclease. Upon annealing of the vector fragment, it will fill the gaps with its polymerase activity. TAC ligase is the enzyme which is heat stable and it is added simultaneously. It will seal the four single stranded nicks and upon annealing the 3 prime OH extension activity of the polymerase will chase the 5 prime to 3 prime exonuclease activity. The fusion polymerase is extremely fast and it will overtake the exonuclease. So gradually the heating can inactivate the heat liable exonuclease. It is a one-step reaction. The addition of ligase gives a higher efficiency. Moreover, it is expensive, more expensive than slick, and it may be less suited for assembly of shorter fragments, around 250 base pairs long. The third technique of our interest is circular polymerase extension cloning, CPEC. The, over here, the PCR reaction happens without the primer. So the denaturation and the annealing of a mixture of vector and fragments gives a product with an extendable 3 prime OH end. Over here, 25 nucleotide overlaps are needed. Only a few thermocycles are needed to get the final product. So it reduces the number of mutations. And the NICs are repaired after transformation of the competent cells. So the benefits of this technology is that no exonuclease activity is required and it is a one-step reaction. Moreover, it is less expensive given this fact and it is more um, and it has more reaction performance at elevated temperature. The infusion cloning kit is a proprietary software, uh, sorry, a proprietary biochemical technique over uh, here the 15 base pair homology is needed and the reaction is performed by a patented recombinase. It is the infusion enzyme and up to four fragments simultaneously are reported with the 80% uh, efficiency and this is dependent on an expensive commercial kit. It begins with amplifying the gene of interest, designing the gene specific primers, then creating the PCR product and adding the linearized vector that we uh, want to amplify. And then we have a 30 minute single tube reaction with the recombinant vector and the polymerase, the infusion enzyme, creates a single standard region at the end of the vector and the PCR product, which are then fused due to the 15 base pair homology. So just to quickly recap and measure the pros and cons of these techniques, BioBrick has no PCR requirement, it is very cost effective but it has no internal biobreak restriction sites allowed. So only binary uh, assembly is possible. The SLIC technique is sequence and ligase independent. It is also scarless and it has inexpensive reagents. However, it is PCR dependent. It's a two step assembly process and it is sensitive to stable secondary structures at assembly piece termini. The Gibson assembly is less sensitive to the secondary structure at the terminal, at least lesser than slick, and it is possibly higher efficiency than slick. However, it has a minimum assembly piece size of 20, 250 base pair requirement. With CPEC, the, uh, less it has less sensitivity to secondary structure at termini than Gibson, 
and it also has small assembly pieces allowed. However, it has uh, an issue with PCR dependence where the termini miss priming is possible throughout the assembly process and it is direct sequence repeats problematic. So it cannot differentiate between much repeat sequences. The Golden Gate assembly in comparison is a scarless multi-part assembly and it excels at combinatorial assembly. However, it is PCR dependent and it has no internal restriction site allowed. It is also uh, expensive because of the high concentration ligase that it involves.